Tundra to their first loss in a series here. They have the chance. Tundra, they only drew a single series so far. Otherwise, they have not bled this tournament. They have been looking absolutely stellar. So we'll see if they can recover here. And doing it with a bristle back. Mm -hmm. Definitely not what a lot of teams would fall back to. Like, oh, we're one down. We need to secure a win here. Hey, let's just go bristle back that nobody has played. Yeah, you'd expect uh, you know the Dragonite or the Sven to come back out again. <laughs> One of these big, potent heroes. Yeah, the Bristleback are cool. Um, I guess, like you said, against all these summons, pretty damn handy. And I guess in the lane potential there with a Jakiro just to bully a Beastmaster and a Gyro early on. Yeah, it could. And Thirty seconds to battle. It's a lane that can be underestimated a lot now. He does have the the level zero Warpath to get some extra damage as well, so he can run you down. See some moves here. Omar cruising forward, pretending mm -hmm. to ward. Hello. He what's, has a lot of gyros? movement speed. He does. There's a movement speed and armor, right? Gyro has pretty high armor level one, so maybe yep. could be able to withstand a bit of that early nasal goose spam. Nice detail there as well. He went and checked for a ward on the cliff, so he knows that there's no observer on the bottom cliff at least, because he walked in and checked for aggro. Not just mid that you can do this. And mid, gonna get dewarded here. And Ducala skills it off. But it was, uh, it was a tiny with a sentry, right? Um, he had the sentry? I don't know if he bought the sentry. Oh, okay. Well, he had it. So I guess it was Ducala's sentry that I gave to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Mid, mid players, we don't buy sentries, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Even for the money for an observer ward? Uh, you never know. It's never a guarantee. Can't no, get into true. that risky investment. <laughs> well, already laying on the tower for noob. And Thompson putting a bit of that early pressure on. Yeah, that's what we're going to see with the Stinger. Has to be careful about the tossback under tower, though, as Tiny does reach level 2. And we got an eye on Sand King that a uh, bonus experience from the D Ward actually gets his level 2. Oh, true. Do, do wards have souls then? Uh, okay. Yes, I believe so. From, yeah, since Shadow Fiend is the great uh, measuring stick for what the has a soul detector. in order. Yeah, I believe <laughs> the wards do indeed have souls. I'm not sure. Eh? Is that, yeah, well, I don't know. We need to go test that. Because we had that, that topic come up with uh, you know cogs being changed, but TA traps maybe not. Observer wards have souls. Mm -hmm. What are plague wards? Venomancers out there. Most things used to have a soul, but it's uh, Valve coming out here and killing the soul of things. Everything is now canonically ginger. <laughs> <laughs> the red-headed bastard make that joke child. Can. <laughs> Soulless creatures. Yeah. On Bristleback, five and four so far. Also under his tower here as the lane gets shoved in pretty hard. And up at top, Ramses alongside nine class. Doom and Rubik against the Chen TA. What 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 does Ducalis bring to the table here? Now how easy is oh how Hard is this lane for TA2000? It's pretty easy lane for TA, honestly. She does decent against the uh, against the Doom early on. It's not that difficult. Uh, Chen is a pretty good bully in the early laning. So, uh, especially against a melee hero like Doom, the TA just spamming meld whenever he comes up. Had a great start so far. 10 and 3 for last hits. But at the same time, Doom been pulling the creeps and getting some nice CSing. So he's at, at uh, 10 and 3 as well after this one. Yeah, really just the it's bristle like a, a farm trade for now. The real question is going to be who activates and when. The boots mm. on Doom is going to be big so we can run people down. Mana boots might come in even. It's, uh, I think he got a Bassy. Yeah. Mm, chasing Jukalis. A lot of damage onto this Chen. Uh, nine classes turned on though, but first blood is grabbed by Ramses. Great start Chen, for him the there. One to die. This is what he needed last game. He didn't get a good start last game, but now not doing too poorly. It's actually holding Devour as a counter, a counter tool to the Chen. He's going to use it in the end here, but definitely not devouring off cooldown. He was considering it for a while if he should use it or not. I wait to see what the Chen brings out to the lane. I currently had yeah, Doom with the Lightning Creep. Pretty damn nice. All right, mid spot, dead even between the two of them. Noob, not too happy stepping into Sandstorm, though, as you mentioned, Topson much faster at shoving the wave and then going back to stack and farm the jungle. Looks like it is blocked, though, with a dire sentry over in that camp, so doesn't have access just yet to start the stacks. 
Yeah, that's a, a good preemptive move, slowing down the farm of him a little bit. And he also doesn't get lucky, he gets the centaur, not the creep camp he wants to see. He wants to see satyrs, he wants to see maybe wolves even, something that is a bit easier and quicker to farm. He's still going to make uh, short work of this centaur camp though. Yeah, take it down bit by bit. Omar is walking across though, but this scouted means Malik gets pressured away from the creep wave. Yeah, and he's trying to stop the D ward. He's going to succeed too. Omar, right place, right time. Oh, good stuff, yeah. It's, it's, it's a double whammy here, right? I mean, maybe triple. He pressures Topson, good damage onto him, stops the D ward, guards the water rune just with his presence there. So it looks like Tiny can grab the top one and maybe down the bottom as well. As Omar moves forward now. Making a lot of swift moves here to also protect Malik in this bottom lane. Yeah, gets back to the lane. Malik was struggling a bit under tower there as the aggressive play was coming in. But uh, being protected again by his gyrocopter who's hovering around. Now with a full salve up, he can start playing lane a bit. God, that stinger out of Sand Kings. Goodbye, creep wave. Yep. <laughs> Disappears very quickly. It really just blows up the creep super fast. It's one of the main reasons why it's good. Placement. Malak's dead though. The pure and white one. Catch up to him. Oh, can and he now get either? Both? Nobody? These quill sprays are stacking up. And Pure might be able to turn here and fight back into this. The rocket barrage, the fog hiding in the trees. Pure stayed alive and gets both of them. The kite. White one surviving as well. The boars can't catch up to it. Beautiful Meanwhile, spread. Ramses Great. actually falls to TA2000 as well. So at least a win on that lane over for the side here. Man, I mean, that was like this expert kiting. God, die to the neutral here. White Mon says, you know what? I need HP. I need mana. I'm out of here. Pure, meanwhile, doesn't really want to die. He's just going to run back and meet his boots, salve up, and get back to lane. He's got to recover his his, his stats, you know, his KDA. <laughs> Bring it back. He had eight deaths in that previous game. Yeah, that was that was like as many deaths as he had throughout the entire tournament so far. Yeah, it was 11. It was like 11 before that game. 11 mm -hmm. deaths across, you know, eight games or something. Yeah, well, really getting tested here by Quest. Quest who are playing for the power runes on both sides. It's going to spawn bottom. Gyrocopter trying to zone out white on. Omar, right place, right time. These first six minutes has been spot on the money in terms of positioning, but he's overstepped his bounds this time as Tundra. Bring nine classes and that additional hero to... Guard the mid spot. And it doesn't mean Noob gets the arcane rune though. Noob looking for a kill here. Has Observer Ward spotted Kira for a little bit. Oh, that should be a, a simple freebie. Okay, kill him off with a toss. Friend. Looks like he's queuing up the power treads. So might not just giga rush into the bullying, but Dyer's actually wants to be able to right click as well for himself. It looks like Ramsey's top lane, even though Nine Class made that rotation. The Doom stays alive, doesn't get pressured too hard by the THN. He's doing pretty well for himself. He's doing all right. The lane gets more difficult now, though, with level six on TA. She's starting to put down traps, already putting one on the uh, outposts, covering any rotation. Oh, the stack stealing. You've made some stacks over here, have you? For your, for your bristleback and your sanking. Oh, noob is going to grab them. It's, it's being pinged out here. Jakiro knows it's happening, but there's just nothing they can do about it. Too late. Can't really stop it. Tiny kills it off so fast with that toss. Insane damage. We're starting to see him move around quickly here, just shoving the mid creep wave very fast. One toss, and then he runs somewhere else. Bottom now. Center of attention. Nine class is thirsty. He wants kills. He'll get, he'll get one. Yeah. <laughs> the boar is dead. Big kill right there. They took down a <laughs> boar that was about to time out anyway. He hey, money, the other money. boar off stacking somewhere we have big stacks being made again by quest it's gold that didn't previously exist on the map <laughs> that is gained by the rubik he's a magician you can conjure it an alchemist more stacks but now contested on to omar a gyrocopter taken out by pure noob does pop a double damage but he's by the mid tier one as topson and pure they sprint into the ancients area here a large camp, but no ancient stack. TA TPing, they're contesting this. Everybody okay. coming. Okay. Ah, try and fight back into Tundra's move. Uh, there's Topson still in the sandstorm. Sentry's down, gives them visions. Yeah. Very quickly dispatched with by Dukas and TA2000. Looked a bit silly there, just sticking around in the sandstorm. Obviously, a detection comes in and he's just killed off very quick and easy. Didn't really look like a mid laner kill. 
And now toss forward. <laughs> Omar used as a farming tool. And Noob with the double damage going to get a few big hits onto that tier one mid. The true support is being a cannonball. And then tossing onto a tower. Takes a chunk out of the HP there. Yeah, some, some heavy hits from Noob's Tiny. He's progressing very fast. His item progression coming in. Top looking for Doom now. And I think kill off Ramses would be a big one. He's going for the TP and he succeeds. While down in that bottom jungle, watching Noob and Omar again pairing up. Bottom jungle pretty much has belonged to them these first 10 minutes as they storm into action. And you're talking about Tiny's progression. Yeah, Blink Dagger just 700 gold away now. And he's gone for this, this build I've seen from Supreme. The treads, the soul ring, little bits and bobs here and there. Not going for the kind of you know, brown boots rush into Blink, which was common a while back. Or the, the, the face boots into Blink, which I feel I've seen a lot from pos fours is this now just the mid tiny build i prefer this i think this is the more suitable build for what you're doing you get a little bit of right tech speed as well because you do attack really really hard so it would be a shame not to use that and uh i don't think you need to get the blink super fast anyway he like look at his farm rate he's gonna have a very nice timing on the blink uh either way and this way he just secures his own scaling at the same time we can talk about how topson is also ahead of him in farm he is at 5.3 5.4 now net worth going for a shiva's rush so doom is not going shiva's rush they're doing it on the sand king doom hmm. is going for a blink dagger rush no midas from ramses huh. no greed <laughs> what's going on there which, which facet does he have he's got the, the devil's bargain so these bracers eventually gonna get sold for for big stonks yeah, that, that's for damn sure. But but wouldn't you buy a Midas if you do have this facet? The Devil's yeah, Bargain? Yeah. You can just sell it afterwards. That's an indication that Ramses wants to play a bit more aggro. For sure. Had enough in game one of sitting back and watching their opponents walk at them. It's what he's been now, doing is what's been working out really well for them overall. It didn't work out that well in the previous game, but overall throughout this uh, Riyadh group stage, they have been uh, having a lot of success on the back of his aggressive, aggressive self-sacrificial uh, sac self offlaning. When two supports just sit with pure down bottom. Dyer's they cleared out a lot of Ancients with the Beastmaster, but uh, still needs 1,200 gold for his Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, 1,000 gold for the Bristlebag's Aghanim Scepter, but he's being tossed and roared around at the tier one bottom. But Pure is so tanky. He had his back turned and well, he's still going to get finished off. Of course, Quest bringing numbers down south. A hasted Sanking running around, maybe considering re-entering the fight. And it's a Doom. Again. Right onto the TA with a Macropire down on top of her. The burst strike Sandstorm, the damage over time, it all adds up. TA 2000 dead, so the one-for-one -one carry trade comes in here in a 5v5 fight where everyone spends everything. Everything used, and they say, you know what, carries died, that's fine, let's back out. Let's reset, and we see people scramble back to their lanes. Tops well, immediately tipping mid. everything except Hand of God. Yeah, that's a little bit awkward, but I think he got... I don't know. He had it earlier, but uh, he can't save anyone against the Doom, right? So he right. couldn't save the TA. That's what we talked about in the drafts. And the rests weren't low enough, so no reason to pop the Hand of God. Yeah, that is awkward, isn't it? Like, we've got a chain with the Hand of God. <laughs> you're stuck in Macro Pie, you're doomed up. I just I can't do anything. Yeah, I can't save you. And that's why they picked the Doom here, I think. They counter out the healing. The Beast and the Chen are really not gonna enjoy it. Super nice. A noob, it is Blink debut time. He's currently invis, but I think, like, they're, they're pinging this out. I think he was scouted, right? That's Radiant Vision. He was under tower. Yeah. He, also, a... they did see the Blink dagger earlier on the bottom fight. He did have it in ah. that fight. They're aware there's the danger of him blinking. He might go on nine class here. Nine class. Oh, he just tosses him away. Hold up. Hey! Hey! Oh, that's a bit cheeky. Thompson. Oh, he's in here as well. Onto Noob. Damn. That was oh. some quick reaction. He actually walked up and did the toss from the low ground. He didn't have vision for sure there. Actually, he did have the Watcher uh, behind. Oh, he just not realized he was on a Watcher. It's just a rage day. just Radiant Watcher, right? Yeah, I, I thought it was dire was... because on the minimap, it's red. It's yeah. always weird when you're an observer. Yeah, I was trying to figure out the whole vision situation there because they... Orange pinged it. Like, Topson pinged when the Tiny moved across by the tower when he was invis, but they had a sentry and a watcher there, I guess. Yeah, for a little bit, move. you get spotted if you make that move that he did on Tiny. He got spotted by the by the tower anyway. Yeah. But then, uh, yeah, nice play. <laughs> nice play by 9-class just walking up there. 
Spamming that toss. Right, we've seen a few of these plays. I remember one back in South American Dota where we had oh, this Dark Mago, but it was a Tiny against the Batrider. Batrider jumps in and Tiny was like preemptively spamming toss. And it's like, yeah, that, little, oh, that yeah. reaction there, it's like, oh, he's, he's good. He's got me. Yeah, well done. I can't really do much about that. Just going to die. And that's a huge pickoff to get as well. This Tiny needs to be shut down. Can't let him take over the game. Wisdom runes are going to spawn. Neither team there at the spawn timing of the Wisdom runes. Everybody kind of busy doing something else. Yeah, busy farming. Aghanim Scepter finished up for the Bristleback. Oh, look at these last hit values. Yeah. Tons also, of creep hitters. 800 gold finished on the, on the Malik Beastmaster. Ramsey's busy body blocking rather than collecting Wisdom Rune. Yeah. We'll see who is going to be the first real aggressor here. Also... He did go back for, uh, he went back for Midas. Wait, didn't he go for Blink? Did he buy Blink, sell Blink on the Doom? He had Blink for sure in his so inventory. So he bought Blink, sold the Blink after taking a fight with it, <laughs> then went and bought Midas. We're finally seeing it, Garrett. Someone <laughs> using the devil's bargain to do cheeky stuff. Ramses is the one bringing it to us. He I did mean... have a Blink bottom for sure. So yeah, that's a nice, uh, nice little detail here. And you were so convinced he was going to buy Midas, and you're like, why is he buying Blink? It's Ramses. Where's your Midas? The, uh, <laughs> I, it was just the order of operations that I got wrong. I thought it was Midas into Blink, but it was a Blink into Midas. I was like, how, how much gold do you do you lose from that? You lose 10% of the Point value. 0.1 times 2250 equals... You lose 225 gold. Yeah, but you get it back very quickly when you pop Midas. First Midas is 160 golds. So, mm. it, and it's about the levels as well. It's definitely an interesting thing to have done. He now buys cool. the Blink again, so he repurchases it. It's a very cheap investment to do this. When you make a deal with the devil, Gareth. You can do anything. The devil's going to come for your soul no matter what, though. <laughs> the devil's bargain. And Doom definitely does have a soul. That's confirmed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many? <laughs> Oh, he's been down to hell a few times. Tier 1 tower taken out without any real resistance. The power rune. A bit of a play for it. Topson gets the shield rune bottled up. He has the Shivas complete on the sanking. So he's pretty uh, pretty damn thick now. And speaking of counter healing, you now have Doom and the Shivas on the Sand King. Prevent the healing. Yeah, good luck staying alive. White Mon is going to get jumped here with a call down and a TA blink. So TA2000 showing off that freshly purchased mobility item. They might want to fight still. They have the shield rune here on Sand King. He's and, feeling strong. And a mech on nine class as well. I mean, countering the healing of your opponents, bringing healing of your own. Steps up, sees two. Omar and Noob, the first point of contact, but in comes the Doom with Pure's Bristle back, doing so much damage out of these cool sprays. The Sandstorm. It's not something they can walk through. Malik is doomed and killed off. Two cores are down. Omar is in trouble. Pure is just spamming. Spell after Link spell, stacking up the minus Ooh. armor. They're on the TA now. The buyback from Noob's coming in, but TA 2000's in some serious trouble. They're trying to heal her up. There's green on the floor. Noob's brought back to come in and toss around Thompson, but he's so tanky. Like you said, the Sand King, incredibly thick. Staying alive with the Macropire drop down from White Mon. Noob's die back. He's emerging here as he's gone for a minute now. It's a complete disaster. Bristleback already up and farming top. And meanwhile, Tundra taking over the bottom part of the map here. The TA had blink for just a bit of a second there. I, I, she didn't get to blink out before the Sand King got her in the claws. And once that stun comes in, Sandstorm quickly gets rid of your fraction charges. She couldn't leave anymore. Just gets caught. She really needs Hurricane Pike against this as well, but it's too early, right? This is only 17 minutes into the game. And this this is much more like the Tundra we've seen previously in the tournament. Uh, they're 5k ahead. They're making these moves like posturing and enemy agents are just sitting there waiting for a fight to come. Resetting, <laughs> putting yourself in a position where you see the targets coming. I just That fight starts with 9 class walking into the middle of them. You know, a mech Rubik, you mentioned how, you know, kind of the hidden tankiness of this hero. <laughs> Very apparent there. Someone had to initiate, and uh, you don't want to reveal your doom, so yeah, just send him in forward here, and we can see how they immediately decide to burst the, the Beastmaster. The moment he blinks in, Ramses says, yep, you're getting a doom, you're not going to stay alive. They ignore the TA in this fight, she doesn't have Deso yet, so you could just let her do her right clicks, that's fine. Eventually they came back to jump her later on. How many freaking seeds of Serenity do we have on Oh, the jump oh, on Oh, the damage comes in just enough. 
enough people there. And a well placed call down, catching up to Whitemont. And Quest showing there are no slouches here. If they see a target, they're going to come in and burst them. Plenty of initial massive damage, but they're going to get turned on. Catching up the TA, the Gyrocopter disappears, and under this sandstorm, massive damage out of Tundra. These two cores are getting real strong now. The Crimson Guard is here because he again sold his Midas. He's now queuing up another Midas. Ramses is just in the business. He's buying, selling, he's trading between every TP2 lane here. He's Googling the stock prices as we speak. Look at this man. The art he's... of the deal. Yeah, truly. <laughs> he's getting an early Crimson Guard timing off it. You know, I really like what we see from him though. It's such a low investment on a 2000 gold item just losing about 200 gold or so is whatever and instead he's getting himself to these big timings on well, my class pairing up with Thompson up top trying to kill off Malik here oh barely kills the Beastmaster as Ramses getting in behind but a central stump buys some time for Ducalis to slip through the forest tuck himself in the tree line but Thompson oh he doesn't see him they see the TP now hey, he's long gone sneaky sneaky TP spot could TP out by the Chen. Gonna stay alive there, but Tundra have really flipped this game on its head. Started out a little bit tough. Didn't really look that great for them. But now, nice control. 5k lead, and they're building on it. And right down to Roshan. 20 minutes here. BKB the on the side. Bristle, so he's not gonna go down as easily as last time they ganked him. Quests are gonna go for the immediate Tormentor. Yeah, this, this really is the first time. Like, we've talked about it so much. We've seen a little bit of, like, the pipe Greaves selling and buying, scaling Doom with this bargain. But this is the first time I've really seen and felt the effect of buy Blink, sell Blink, buy Midas, sell Midas, buy Crimson, buy Midas, sell Midas. You know, Ramsey must have a flowchart somewhere or Moomian is in his ear saying, right, you know, it's, uh, it's time, you know. Midas is on cooldown. You can buy it in 30 seconds. That's really funny. It's actually just looking at the game in a very different way than any other hero could where he can adapt on the fly here right now he's got that crimson garden probably that's gonna stay in his inventory but should they need a, a pipe for instance here if they want to hit a timing he could even sell the blink by a pipe and suddenly they have double auras now he's so flexible very adaptable into this yeah, it's like what, what do i need to win the next fight what do i need to win the game you can just drop everything buy something new middle tower is under yep. attack the double bracers are still staying there, though. They are still useful for him. All this swapping around. And usually in a game, when you have to respec your character, you've got to pay quite a bit of money, right? I mean, let's do... Able to do a little bit. Almost for free. It's uh, definitely not a bad deal to be able to um, adapt to whatever threat you have. And making Doom look a lot more solid of a pick than some of these other players who have uh, been playing Doom. I haven't really been able to utilize him like this. I'm not a barbarian. I'm a, I'm a sorcerer. I'm not a sorcerer. I'm a bard. He's going around <laughs> shredding on his guitar. He's all sorts of stuff here as he rebuys the hand of Midas again. He's multi-classing <laughs> yes. for a cheap fee of 10%. <laughs> 22 minute rune. Shield for Topson again. Oh, he's so incredibly tanky. Bloodstone, of course, ready as he swings into Blink. And we're seeing more and more of this, you know, Bloodstone kind of rush he did go for the shivers got first but bloodstone a core item on this mid sanking for sure definitely yeah a good item uh, i i'm not as in love with the first item bloodstone i think in this game the shivas could just be a reaction to the beastmaster and the chen but i think i like it more overall sanking usually dies to physical right clicks he's not a very high armor hero but with the shivas he's sitting at 30 armor so mm. <laughs> it's not that easy to burst him and again he has a shield rune so they're looking for a fight with this over on the side of quests, they don't have their items quite yet. Still way off their BKB. Tiny has yeah, Blink and uh, Echo Saber, I guess, but I think you really need the BKBs to come in before you can fight into Tundra's five man. We've got our ultis here as well, all across the Tundra. It feels like their ultis have been far more impactful. The Doom, the Epicenter, not even using it right now, knowing they've got enough in the tank to bring down Omar. He's got a mech. Buy a little bit of time for himself, but eventually the gyrocopter will cease to fly. Yeah, just slowly being brought down here. No chance to stay alive, really, as they uh, hunt for more. At the same time, Pure just pushing down mid lane, confidently going for a tier 2 tower with his Aegis in hand. Nobody wants to fight him. Has been 
Mm, noob cutting the wave. Top lane pushed in by TA2000, so at least a little bit of map space here for Quest. And they know they're you know, playing into the two minutes of Aegis on a bristle bag, so kind of difficult to challenge Pure as he just waltzes up the high ground and onto your tier three tower. What, 24 minutes in? Yeah, this is a knock knock moment right here, but they lose quite a bit of HP. 800 HP gone from that tower. Finally getting forced back as well, while Tundra are just taking over more and more map control here. That's yeah, very much a setup for next time, right? Next time they come, the, the tier three is dying, racks are falling. Maybe with that second Aegis later down the line. Conundrum here. Does she buy the shard or does she just hold out for the BKB? Feels like playing TA without shard is just a big concession as well. Not having that silence on the traps really hurts, but she needs to scale as a core. Gonna go for a Tormentor steal. Find herself in the right position for this. That's pretty nice. Is there a chance she gets the shard? Uh, no. no, I don't think so yet. She's the top farmer and uh, we don't see shard yet on the Beastmaster and the tiny. Mm. It's gonna go the way of the Chen. So it's the... jump in. Tops and starts it. Beastmaster lifted back into Macro Pyre, but Malik has BKB. Trying to turn and fight back, but the physical damage from the bristle back brings the Beastmaster down, and Omar completely wide open. Killed off with no buybacks here on Quest as they're being dived under tier fours. Ducala's gonna get shredded. Double kill comes through for pure. And now we're looking at this push up to high ground continuing potentially. But oh, the creep waves are nowhere nearby. Yeah, Beastmaster is trying to push with his boar, trying to drag the creep wave away, but his boar's timing out. And they'll still stick around. And if they can find another kill here, get the creep wave up to tier three. And they know there's what, 20 seconds at least to be able to bring down a full lane. Good time to be auto attacking in here. Still have the Aegis for 26 more seconds as well. So pure can get his HP back, but I think they can happily back and reset here. They got a ton of kills, good base damage, forced everybody home. And TA is out there on the map finishing up her BKB right now. But they're gonna go back home and they, they got rewarded big time for that dive. And they're just vacuuming up the rest of the creeps on the way back as well. It's not just a, you know, a TP to lanes with everyone. Pure and White Mon are filtering back, taking some camps with them. And of course, the rest of them did move back to push out the other lanes. Scoring a ton of farm for sure. Uh, Sanking also quickly working his way towards what looks like an Octarine core. I think Thompson is probably a pro player who loves Octarine core the most. Yeah. Speaking of I, Thompson, I, yeah. he's getting ganked here. Oh, you look at Wait. him. Hang on. He's gone oh, in on this. Hey, is he tanky enough to withstand five? Oh, no, not this time. <laughs> <laughs> that looks a bit crazy from our perspective, but he didn't really have that much vision. He just wanted to jump whatever he saw. Sadly, it was everybody right there, except for Noob and his tiny, of course. I wonder what the comms are like. Like, oh, I've, I've got, I've got some. I found them, guys. <laughs> I found them. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, definitely stuck in here with you. Moment. Well, a move going well for Quest, finally. And it's been a long time coming for them to actually get a, a bit of momentum to build on this map now. Yeah, of course, they were looking to the... Uh, Deso damage stack as well for the TA. Hasn't been yes. involved in any kills apart from this one since she got the Deso. Finally getting to add a little bit. I mean, look at that big difference there. 8.3k damage out of the TA. 10k from the Tiny. Big, big numbers being posted, though, by the Radiant Cause. As it looks like Noob is going to be able to BKB TP home. Doom expended. I feel like Thompson is really the man of the hour though in this game. I mean, obviously he just threw a little bit there, blinking in, but uh, his impact this game has been enormous with the mid-sand king, making it look good. I have not really been a fan of the mid-sand king ever since the Dust Devil nerf. I've seen a few mm. mid-sand kings, I haven't been impressed, but he's making it look very, very strong in this game. And I think a lot of it comes back to that he went for Shivas instead of Bloodstone. He wasn't very easy to kill with a physical damage lineup. Um, from the TA, for instance. Yeah, I think I've only seen it like three times start to finish. A Laurel twice with one win, one loss, and then this is the third time. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been like, you know, a 50-50 for Laurel. It's been okay. It's been all right and then quite poor. But Topson really bringing the pain here with this you know, Shiva's Guard, a nice addition that you pointed out yeah. earlier it's on. Master smoking up together with his friends here. Chen and Gyrocopter joining in. Even TA might get br uh, brought into this gank onto the Bristle. Can he get the BKB out? Oh, not. Lord. Pure. That minus armor. It stacks up. Bristle dead for 70. Another window here for Quest to make the map their own. A big pickoff and 
Tundra caught a little bit uh, a little bit slow here, even though they have a big advantage. Radiant Suddenly it's flipped and Quest are the ones fighting back. Are yeah, I felt like Tundra just building, building, but yeah, you're right, kind of caught napping. And tier 2 tower up top, looks like it's a, a quick one here for TA2000. And how far are we from Roshan? We'll find out in a couple of seconds as the quick spawn is about now. Early spawn is one minute, five seconds is what we're going to get. So a little bit of a timing window. The Bristleback is going to respawn in time. He has his AC, of course. He didn't look very tanky in that fight, but he was also completely alone. If they group up right now, they are quite durable on the side of uh, Tundra. Have an Octarine core on the Doom now as well. So not just Topson being a, an Octarine enjoyer. It really is a resilient draft from Tundra. Uh, you said Noob could have some struggles here with the mid-tiny to really connect with these heroes. Difficult to kill any of them, <laughs> even the supports. Magic is a stark Rubik. contrast to his last uh, performance on Tiny, where it was 16-1 and 15 or whatever. Here, he just can't burst anybody. Everybody is pretty tanky. Like I mentioned earlier, the, the Rubik, he's sitting at 46% magic resistance just off his little spell amp. Animals. The Menagerie. A little zoo of Chen over in the Roche pit as they are just waiting for the big man to respawn. Patiently. This is uh, very, very patient considering it could be two more minutes until he spawns, <laughs> but they are going to get paid off for their patience. That was an investment in Roche respawning. Imagine if it was two more minutes that they had to wait here. <laughs> they would just be sitting around. Was it sunk cost fallacy? You know, when when do you say enough's enough? You know, never, never. You sit there and you wait. We've you spent sit. a minute here. We'll spend another, and then we'll spend another. You sit there until enough racks have fallen. <laughs> but yeah, Tundra are uh, now finding themselves in an awkward spot. They want to be the aggressors, but Quest are the ones who have the ages and cheese in hand. And they did set themselves up pretty nicely with the lane pushing, though. Bottom and mid. Have to be dealt with here, and now Tundra kind of playing into that top jungle around their vision. TA gonna go for a Tormentor again here with the help of her friends. That's the Shadow Blade as well, going for that Silver Edge to have break against this uh, Bristleback. No, it didn't feel like they to... needed it in that previous pickoff, but like you said, he was alone. <laughs> They'll need it when he's gathered up with his team. Exactly. It's it's more dangerous the the more people are involved in the team fight. If it's just a pickoff, it's uh, one story. Everybody's there. You might need this break. It's a good DPS item for TA still. Not as amazing as it used to be, but uh, not a terrible pickup. Did, did Tiny have different cosmetics for his different levels? Has he always been this little crab guy? Wasn't he always crab? I thought he was crab. Okay, maybe, maybe I'm crazy. I thought he was normal Tiny earlier on, but I must be losing my damn mind. <laughs> maybe now he's a mile lurk. He's a mile lurk from Fallout. Out. Nowadays. Yeah, you can. That's why I was wondering if he's like, you know, normal baby tiny, then uh, some kind of massive rock middle tiny, then crab big tiny. The multiple evolutions. Against that. Speaking of anti-healing, by the way, we've been focusing how Tundra are countering out the healing from the side of quest. But Tundra also rely a bit on healing now with the uh, Bristleback having his uh, Paladin Sword and building a Satanic next item. So we have a Shivas coming in next, it seems like, for the, uh, the Beastmaster. Trying to be ready for the, the healing Reliant um, Bristleback. That's going to be pretty handy. How does this fight start? The quest smoked coming from the right hand side. Lines drawn to wrap around a long way. And it looks like White Mon has made the call that they are around their Tormentor and potentially coming down around them. <laughs> Might see both teams go around each other like this. We literally have arrows coming in here. Thank you, noob. <laughs> Being uh, very clear in how you guys want to go. So the El Nino effect, you know, a hurricane building around the warm air down in this bottom lane. They cycle around and around each other. Oh, let's see. Get a, little, get a little wrap around here, see if they can uh, avoid getting smoke revealed. I think Ramsey's in a good position on high ground. I mean, the Tundra are just on high ground in general up on the staircases. And it looks like Quest are saying, screw this, we're going to push bottom tier one, get a bit of map space for ourselves rather than rushing into you. Tiny gets a tower, pushing bottom a little bit, building towards item. They are close to a lot of items, so it makes sense they don't really want the confrontation. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, and then playing under their own vision. And of course, the, the commandments of Dota play under wards. Are 
Protect your vision and play into them. And now we don't have a smoke. We do have a smoke on Jakiro still. He could pop it here. After clearing this camp, he's going to do it. So he wants to smoke into the lineup of quest. He knows that they're behind here. Oh, man. And TA is running away from this. If they don't have her nearby, it could be a bit awkward. They're just going to go for a free pick. Yeah, they saw the gyro push that wave. Omar is an absolute freebie here. Yeah, you can mech, you can pavis, but you're dead. No way out of that one. Can't really stand against everybody alone. So you get the kill. Meanwhile, though, the creep wave did die down there. And all of Quest are moving up to tick the top area. Holding. Kind of crazy still how Quest are the ones with Aegis, but they're still trying to weasel themselves into a good position. Tundra, the, these tanky fellas just pushing waves, playing as five, seem very difficult to, to break past. Effectively, Quest are ahead in gold and they're ahead in advantage with the Aegis and the Cheese, but even so, I think the item timings and the heroes, the way it works out, Tundra are way stronger in a 5v5 fight right now. If they get an honest fight, just uh, both teams even initiation, then Tundra should be dominating it. Mm, TA2000. Ooh, risky business. Spooky times. There's no gem, though. We don't and see them. And a jump. Further back, though, it's Thompson starting things out on Jukalis. got a pick. The Chen is down. Now lift back the Tiny as well. TA2000, pop the BKB, faces off against the Rubik. Nine class, he is slain. Perishes to the Templar Assassin, who oh, we seal tokens back towards safety. Omar, he's come in to try and save the day, but look at the TA2000. Nearly dies straight up to the bristle back. Goes into meld, blinks back to safety now, but Noob has been left stranded in the sandstorm. Oh, he's got cheese and a BKB though. Malik, his BKB ends and he's doomed up. The target acquisition here from Tundra has been exceptional. Going from one target to the other, killing the core, a popping the Aegis. Mm, does have a blink dagger though. Gets back behind tier fours. Quick blink away there. If he had Sandstorm on Sand King, if they had some more abilities to stop him, maybe they could have gone a really big kill there. They hold for now on the side of quest. Two buybacks used, one on Rubik, one on Chen. Beast, Beastmaster dead for 50. Might just Glyph expended as well. Here. Yeah, they forced a few things, but looks like they're still going to be happy just backing and resetting here. They're in a favorable position on Ramsey on, uh, Ramsey's and the boys, Tundra here. Holding more important part of the map. Yeah, with that again. sneaky play in the start of the fight, though, I think that was instrumental to them actually holding. Beastmaster scouting with his courier. Malik sends it over Tundra, but that's kind of given away their in. positioning here as Thompson goes right onto Omar. Not able to catch up to him and kill him off just yet. Ramsey's going for a bit of a poke and a prod as well. And Tundra, they've held onto this position around the enemy tormentor spot as Quest tried to get back in towards them, thinking about re entering. Difficult fight to take against this Bristleback, though, with the DD rune as well. It's timing out soon. It, it just feels so awkward for both teams to find that opening. Like, everyone's so tanky. We're so reliant on that first jump to come in from Tiny or Tops and Sanking. That, They're so uh, evenly matched right now. The teams are very close. Both of them have all these items for survivability. Tops and is angling here for an advantage. So far, I just felt like that the TA's kind of struggled a bit, even with that nice move to wrap in from behind. TA2000 can't stand his ground and fight. Always has to be thinking about blinking away, trying to play defensively. Yeah, even as the Ogre Seal told him for exactly that, just trying to stay alive. I bet you he had some other nice options as well for neutral items, but prioritizes the repositioning here in this game. Mm. I desperately needs it. Nice to see Quest playing out on the map as well, knowing that they are kind of being... The Midas is gone again on Ramses, this time replaced by a refresher. Oh yeah. yeah. Is he gonna buy the Midas again? <laughs> And then refresh it, use <laughs> and it, and then sell it. it. Yes. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at this point. He does have a gem as well, so he's kind of full on inventory. There goes those, uh, those tier threes. Tundra set up quite a bit earlier. Thinking back 15 minutes ago, where they took that tier three mid down quite low as Noob makes the jump right on in on the pure, the break in the damage. 
kills the bristle back off now Thompson, he's half hp he's stuck in a sandstorm but with a nice path and a bit of uh, a stun back into them he's life stealing up off the Ooh, stone, again but he's got so much damage coming on top of him he's down ramses has managed to kill off the ta in the back thanks to Thompson's sandstorm though and another very back and forth fight where you've both lost your carry and your off laner so slow <laughs> well your mid laner even as noob is dragged back into another ice path infernal blade noob about to die tries to punch back omar now stuck in the middle of three as well as ramses he's the true carry emerging in this game now the big bad doom with the devil's bargain comes back in onto the chen and it looks like tundra are about to team wipe quest it felt Why, like an even tiny? fight but the staying power here from Tundra, able to keep on going, forcing double buyback out of the cause. Ramsey, he's There's gonna, gonna be die to a mark. double kill from Noob. I mean, they trade back and get some more kills, but double core buyback has got to hurt. Yeah, definitely. That is painful investment here for Quest. Now, double buyback on your post one and post two against a refresher Doom. Either of them dying is a win condition for Tundra opening up here, so. This is a very, very risky position to be in. Looking now to maybe do something during this time, but the respawns are coming in. Sand King and Bristol are coming up. I don't think you can even punish Tundra for this. Oh, this is just a wild fight. Toss into Roar, into Silver Edge. Bristol back dies immediately, and Look Tundra still... Sand King. This turnaround was so important. The fact that he got the ulti out, got his damage out, Ramses could follow up and get the kill there. Like keeping up what's happening in these fights is wild, even though you have already seen it once. Watching it back the second time barely helps. There's so many things to look at. You've got to keep your your eyes sharp here in these team fights, especially for the players, of course. It's confusing even just to watch. So for the players, they need to coordinate, they need to communicate. And you can see that they did that. Quest, they call, we can just kill the Bristovac. He dies. I have break on Silver Edge on the TA. And you could see them just combo there. Toss him back and he's dead. Um, at the same time, Tundra reacted very well to a panic situation. Now we might see them start to adapt a little bit, though, saying that, okay, Bristol, you're not invincible. We need to readdress how we're going to approach the fight. Mm. Oh, my favorite part of the game now as well. When Roshan has respawned, both teams are alive. It's a, like a dead even game. Uh, Tundra haven't contested Roshan yet this, this game either. They've just let PSG Quest kind of have it or steal it. You know, some good moves from again. Quest to take it. There's but this time, it, on this. Yeah. Rushing over in smoke. Are they in time? TA takes Roche very fast. It's gonna oh, die. Ah, Roche is dead. I mean, Tundra looks like they still want to try and fight into this, though, as oh, no, they position still themselves. Jumping in onto the twin gate. Ducalis being focused. Does try to drums away, but Tops and Pure are on his tail. Chen gets two hit by this warpath bristleback. Gets smacked. Absolute wallop. They do get out, and they do get a lot of items there. So he is consuming the... Wait, did he not? Oh, he left the Aghanim some tiny. Does he not want it? No, he consumes it now. Put it on the ground for a while. I wasn't sure if he was going to give it to uh, to someone else. But they got the, the Aghanim some tiny, so extra real damage. He has an, a Daedalus as well. So that could be a huge surprise in the next team fights. This could be massive, yeah. And they are down a Chen with no army. 30 seconds. They've got Aegis on TA. Let's see how this goes. It's kind of, uh, kind of surprised that Tundra haven't taken a barracks yet. The amount of times they've gone high ground and it's looked like they're going to take a lane. And still, no, two tier threes are standing. Bottom racks are still alive. PSG Quest just looking really resilient in this game. They are fighting back tooth and nail. Uh, of course, they're still trying to survive this period of not having buyback. This is a very tense moment for them. Four minutes and 45 seconds left of no buyback. So, any pickoff they can find right now, Ninja Gear on the Doom is huge for him. Mm -hmm. This can enable him to maybe find that clutch Doom on either of these targets. Let's see if we can get it. Yeah. The Aegis is providing a nice, nice sense of security here, though. Otherwise, could have been a detrimental moment for them. Aghanim's Scepter, Jakiro. Hey, hey, here we go. Uh, can we look at that uh, total damage again? Because you pointed out the other day where Jakiro was the, the highest damage dealer in the game. Not True. yet. Not yet for White Mon, but with his Aghanim Scepter, it's possible. <laughs> He'll have to work hard to overtake the Sand King at this stage. But yeah, he, he, he does do place. a lot of damage. Yeah, he's like, please, can you guys just stand in the macro for a while? We did have a crazy game of uh, support Jakiro the other day. Indeed. Uh, Topson, by the way, has picked up a Lincolns on his Sand King. So starting to address this uh, 
this Beastmaster initiation, thinking about how the initiation is uh, is gonna go. Maybe he puts this Lincolns over on the Beastmaster or Bristleback mm. when they want to siege up. Yeah, put pure high ground, put some spells on him, buff up the Bristleback. And Lotus Orb is there for the Rubik as well. So yeah, I think you're right. They have Noob. itemized to contend with it. Noob has queued up a Divine Rapier right now. <laughs> Here we he go. has the Aghanims, has the Daedalus. Is the big balls kind of play? Is he going to do it? Doesn't have enough gold yet, but we might just see it. Now look at that. Clear out the creep wave with just a single tree toss. Ramsey now hits his level 25. It's a big power spike. Get the slow and the blind on his sandstorm. That's pretty cool. Is, is Ramsey's going for Shiva's guard as well? Like I guess he needs the armor. Yeah, I saw that earlier. I didn't really mention it, but yeah, they're going for a double Shiva's. Um, it's just a good armor item, and you might not always have your sanking around. It's a little bit bad, but it's not horrible. They already have AC on the Bristleback, so what other item should you really go for at this yeah. stage? Uh, pondered it a little bit. I mean, could go for the BKB, but do you really need one against Quest's lineup as a Doom? Perhaps it would have been strong, but I, I like this. I like this choice. Just armor. You're dying to physical damage at this point. Especially against the Tiny and the TA now. The Daedalus Tiny with Aghanims. Yeah, it's like in a pub game, I'd probably make an argument for Blade Mail. But in a, in a pro game, just having that, you know, vision, the chase from Shiva's Guard. The fact it's just a, a bigger item with better stats as well. Yeah, super cool. nice. Blade Mail is decent, but it doesn't work that well against TA as well. She blocks a lot of damage with refraction. Oh, she true. can uh, tank through it. And uh, Tiny has a ton of HP. He's almost 5k HP. So trying to Blade Mail kill him, you might just die first. Then you oh, die first, but if you've got... Moment here. And Quest all smoked up. Where, where are Tundra? They, they don't know. We don't know. Tundra off the map hiding in the fog somewhere. The ping from Pure Seems is off towards their ancients. So close to each other. Tundra waiting on the high ground. Over in the triangle. Yeah. Very, very important moment here for uh, Tundra. They're going to reveal the Bristleback on the mid lane. He's pretty tanky with a rattle cage as well. That's Aegis timing out in 10 seconds now. So Tundra have kind of weathered the storm of this power spike out of Quest. Yeah, I think uh, the dangerous part is over for them, so to say. Having their buybacks coming off cooldown again. That'd be a sigh of relief for them. But still, you, you can't relax too much. This Doom could come in at any moment. Tundra really grouping up a lot, though. Not looking like they're comfortable getting out on the map. And look at the amount of vision that TA is providing at this point. She has traps all over the map. It's giving some cru crucial bits of information. They're not here. They're not here. It's not always about seeing your opponent. It's about seeing where they aren't. And uh, this gives them the confidence to go out on the map. Yeah, process of elimination. I'm seeing the heat map there as well. In a pure TA 2000. Spending a lot of time in agents and just you know, pushing out on the opposing lane. Kind of in their off lane towards the Roshan pits. Topson gonna come across in that mid lane, push out another wave. And yeah, Bristleback, first time this patch. We've not seen Bristleback yet, so pretty much every one of his items is like a new, new record. First time this patch. And Abyssal Blade now adding another <laughs> layer of disables here for Fastest Tundra. this tournament. Impressive. Also, only this tournament. Yep. And refresh off for Beastmaster. Divine Rapier Tiny. Hand. Oh, here we go. He's putting it to magical right now. That's interesting. Back. Was that a mystic? No, he toggles it back now. I was about to say, there's no way magical is worth it. He's going to toggle it for the toss specifically and then toggle it back. But there's a cooldown. This is where the game does start to get like a bit annoying as well for Tundra. Chen creeps are just doing the ghost push business, right? Look at that, bo that bottom wave. TP's coming back, have to defend it. You have to contend with all this nonsense. A sneaking suspicion that this game could drag out a lot, honestly, at this point. Tundra do not feel like they can go high ground, but Quest are starting to feel confident. They have the rapier. They could just keep building. Mid. Maybe the confrontation will happen here. Yeah, we're, we're in, we're in the, the portion of the game now where buybacks matter so much. Looking at Sand King having his. Bristleback is 50 gold off. G uh, Rubik nearly has his. And on the dire side, we'll have TA, Chen, and Gyro with theirs. Everyone else is uh, a fair distance away from it. Yeah. Importantly, 
Piney committing for that rapier. He's the one who really doesn't want to die. And he's also the with the buyouts well. of the refresher. And Tundra posturing in the mid lane. Both Not teams seeing have anybody. Yeah, the map is so dark for everyone. They spot the gyro and the tiny. He's like, oh, hello. <laughs> Clear the creep wave with a crash landing, though. Both teams killing the mid creep wave, and then what? What are you going to do afterwards? We don't have any smoke on the dire team here. Reminds me of the days when Roshan was still in the river up there, you know? Top rune spot was Rosh Pit. Teams just pushing mid lane over and over again. Maybe that would have forced an engagement at this point. Right now, they're just kind of holding. Rosh could spawn any moment now. He will spawn in 220, so teams will have to migrate and start taking control over the Roche. They all were spotted walking past this ward towards the top. Radiant under a ward for a little bit. That gives them the go-ahead sign here on quest to take over the bottom part of the map, but that's not a good trade. You want to contest the Roche. You want to be there. So ideally, they get over there and take a fight somehow. They have the smoke on Courier coming out. Showing you start to get mid. really... Pushing. Topson will deal with that very quickly. Yeah, you start to get really antsy. You know, gotta make a move, gotta make a play, gotta do something. Oh no, the smoke, it started going back to base again. He had full inventory on the gyrocopter. Oh no. It's coming back again. What was it? Two minutes till daytime, a minute and a half until Roche spawns. And it could be up right now in that top no, left corner. Gonna pop it here with a courier. And they will make a stab around. They were spotted. The Observer of Radiant did catch them smoking here. Huge moment here for Tundra. And Ramses. I was thinking about walking in towards them there. Uh, I also considered... I considered TPing down bottom to deal with a wave, but it looks like Don't they're going to smoke scan. themselves and move back up towards the Roche pit. Oh, they're under the scan. scan. Dire scan. The scan. Quest knows something's up with the blink from Thompson. Immediate jump on the gyro. TA2000 turning on Ramses. The Doom is obliterated. So this macro bar is down on the gyro, but TA2000 with his BKB turning on Thompson, who's nearly dead. The roar of the axes gets a double for Malik. Pure is trying to get on top of someone to kill them, but he's struggling. Finally finds Malik as a hero he can target. Beastmaster being walloped by the bristle bag. They bought back on Thompson. They lost that Ramses Doom, who also buys back. Bottom, bottom creep wave. This Rax, it's falling. The Chen creeps are pushing really fast. Yeah, I mean, Tundra's going to do something about this. And then Roshan, they're moving to top left corner. He's, he's spawning in 25 seconds, but he, he might just move down to the bottom right corner soon. Yeah, uh, they will kill him pretty fast. They don't have the best Roshan up on Radiant. Can they actually take him in? Nah, not in 20 seconds, I don't think. This is the, the fourth Rosh. He's kind of tanky at this point. That's a difficult one for sure. I think you have to go down bottom, control bottom area, but there's a TA trap on the other side of the gate. And now with two buybacks <laughs> used, we find Tundra a little bit scared. They see it spawn now, but 15 seconds. Can you really do it? They're going to try. Well, before he goes through the gate, they're going for it? Yeah, they're going for it. 10 seconds to go. I, okay, it looks like they've got it. Yeah, I think they have it. Pure actually just hits so hard. He has plus, plus 600 damage. I think I underestimated the Bristleback's uh, potential here to right-click. Takes it out fast. All right, so what is that? Ags on Topson. Aegis for Topson as well, since he bought back. So Ramsey's Doom is the one that has to be a bit more careful in this one. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a risky business being without buyback in this game, but at least that Aegis over on Topson is going to help him stay safe. We'll see what he queues up as in the next item, as he got that Aghanims for free. He already bought the Travels level 2 in that last fight. Bought back and bought Travels level 2 immediately to join the fight. Man, they this... didn't get anything, so Quest, they lost the fight, or they won the fight, but they lost the objective of Roche. So, uh, again, the game stays very even here. This is the closest match we've had so far. Yeah, this is on a knife's edge right now. And nothing, nothing matters. Kills don't matter. Net worth difference doesn't matter. This is all down to execution. You've got some buybacks on Quest. You've used some buybacks on Tundra, but they've got Ages and Cheese. A few little backup plans and safety nets for Tundra to try and find these fights. It's, it's not easy to stick on your man, though. Like, finding a target, getting the kill when they're being healed up by Ducalis, tossed around by Noob. Like, just trying to find this Tiny in the middle of a fight seemed very difficult. He has the ninja gear, so he's sneaking around as well with that uh, Divine Rapier. He's just hugging tree lines, looking for where he can be the most impact. Just start spamming in the, uh, the Aghanim's trees. And he does a ton of damage. He actually does bring down any hero quite quickly with that. 
with a little bit of help from TA. Some quick kills. These uh, ancient creeps always just being a thorn in the side of Tundra here. Chen showing that even as you go late game, Chen is not that bad of a hero. Can still help push out creep waves with the ancient black dragon now. Sleeping a little bit, but gonna kill the creep wave. And how many levels does Ramses need? Just a couple more before he can get that second level 15 talent. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you think, I mean, I'm not gonna call it a mistake, but do you think it would be maybe better to go for the, the Eat Ancients talent or is that Scorched Earth one just so good? I think it's more that the War Stomp is so good. War Stomp is uh, super high priority for uh, pro players. It's providing the Doom with Blink Initiation. You basically become a Centaur, um, find himself a Shield Rune attack. here. But yeah, it's a little bit the lost opportunity of having the Scorched Earth move speed, but it's more so that being an Ancient Creep isn't really better. For him in this game, it's just gonna mean that he can eat the, the dragon, but he still won't want the aura and the yeah. fireball more than stomp. Tiny's courier is down here. Thompson. What is that? 30 was on the dot minute 20 when they took that tier three down to like 20% HP, finally get the kill on it. 33 minutes later. And now Pure can open up on the melee oh racks. Oh my god, he hits hard. <laughs> the yeah. racks getting absolutely punished here by the bristleback. And he packs a punch, does Pure, but in comes Malik with a roar, the damage of the TA. Oh, Pure disappears again, buys back, tries to snap into action as they doom up the Beastmaster now. Tops him with a Sandstorm going to work to kill off Malik. He's got buyback available too. They doomed the Tiny on the back line, so no tree volley, no nonsense there. Yeah, but again, the buyback used here by Radiant, so Pure spending a buyback, TPing back in, but they're not in shape to keep pushing. And Quest are the ones who are very happy with this, as now one more buyback is on cooldown here. They're in a very opportune moment to take a fight. Sanking no buyback, Bristol no buyback, Doom no buyback. You just have to kill anybody here. Of course, the Sanking with the Aegis, not the best target, but that times out in a minute too. I was, I was wondering what happened there, because they had this layering of Lincolns and Lotuses as protection for the Bristol, right? But Sanking has Lincolns in backpack. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, he, he can't hold it uh, while holding all the other items here. And you see the initiation was perfect. The Silver Edge came in at the same time as it's done, at the same time as Tiny launched his three volley. Tons perfect, of damage. Yeah. And uh, did I see that correctly? That Bristleback bought, bought a Blink Dagger just now? He does have a Blink, yeah. So he can Blink a Bristol someone. It's not the first time I've seen this in late game. Uh, Bristol does get kited a lot. And this gives him the potential to get on the back line. There are some mm. pretty kite heavy heroes. TA with a Silver Edge, Blink, and Hurricane Pike is pretty hard to get on top of. Um, so the tosses are annoying. More importantly, just getting on the Tiny. Now has 7,000 gold. He's starting to save up a lot of money here for his, uh, his rebuy back. Oh, sorry, the gold was TA still. She has 7,000 gold. Maybe we see another rapier coming out. That'll be cool. That's a lot of money saved up over on the quest side there. Unspent gold, four grand for the tiny. 7.2 you mentioned on the TA. The jar, the jar of has got like six grand. <laughs> yeah. Mean? He's running around with a gold scepter, a pavis, and six grand. He's going to go for a surprise hex in this game. He mm. queued it up, bought the entire thing now, tries to stay out of vision, but he does go under a ward sentry combo here. So as long as they click him, they should have the information already that he has a hex. I smoke under that ward as well. So uh, a flurry of pings from Tundra as they fully understand what's going on here. And they, look at that, even though Tundra are behind, that was an 8k net worth swing in their favor due to the Aegis. So at least a, a victory in some regard, money-wise. Tiny did have 7k gold before he just bought the relic. So he now bought the full second rapier, two rapiers on this Tiny. He's ready to is he blow holding, people up. Is he holding both or is one back? He's up? holding both. Both okay. already. This is a full on crazy mode here for this tiny he wants to kill people all in revenge time you knocked us out of ti qualifiers we're gonna knock you down a, a peg or two in the group stage here at the red masters i want to see him hit a building man i know he doesn't want to go up to a tier two tower right now but i just want to see the damage it's like four hits five hits i think maybe maybe three hits for a tier two. Oh, oh really wow i mean it's a lot of damage uh, I might be just underestimating it. <laughs> He's hasted up now, sprinting across the map. Ninja Gears uh, definitely helping Quest reposition themselves. 
Don't see anybody right now, so it's scary to go up. Is Noob gonna find the balls to go for this tower? It would be scary. And it's it's been annoying when you know, Tundra on the front foot are being split pushed and side pushed, ghost pushed, whatever you want to call it, by the Chen creeps. And now they're being pushed all three lanes. And oh, you're having to contend with all trees. the volley. But the blink in, Thompson with Ramsey, dooming up the tiny. They're gonna oh, blow up no. Noob here. They've got the catch with a double rapier on the deck. Oh, this is big. Quest gonna try and come in with a roar. The Beastmaster getting on top of Thompson, but he's so tanky. He is not dead just yet. But look at that side blade spill out of the TA. Gets him down. Finally, they do get back. So Jakiro has one of the rapiers. Urso <laughs> has the other. Jakiro has put that stuff to magic damage right now. So you <gasps> want to see a Jakiro do a lot of damage? Yeah, he'll take the free 25% uh, spell. Um, thank you very much. Hey, he's catching up. I wasn't wrong. They don't he's have the best the heroes for rapier, sadly. The <laughs> Brissa is holding one, but he's also struggling now. He's like, okay, I guess I don't have Blink anymore. He has Lincolns in his inventory. I wish my Sand King could take this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they don't really have a traditional right click carry, so uh, the double rapier was costly, though. And buyback spent immediately by the Tiny, who's, by the way, back and farming for another rapier. He's just. Another day at the factory, <laughs> just, just assembling <laughs> rapiers. I, I appreciate you, noob. I appreciate what you do for this game. You're bringing a lot of entertainment to this game. Potential longest match record, 90 minutes and 55 seconds. We're a bit away from that, but you, you made the call. What, less than 10 minutes ago, this one could drag out and go the distance. I, I had a feeling, man. I had a feeling with how Quest were in a comfortable spot, but also had the rapier, so they didn't want to go out. But yeah, the double rapier now obviously gives a bit of a timing window to, or not, not a timing, but a bit of an advantage to Radiant. Look at Radiant though. Tundra are just all in, sit in base mode. Nobody out on the map, nobody farming. In two minutes, we're going to have the big items, Gareth. Yeah, don't show. Don't, don't show until tier fives are here. Then go farm ancients. Get some tokens. Yeah, I want to see some tier fives. Uh, that's a hand of Midas on TA. Minute, minute 60. Yeah, she's prepping. She's prepping for the uh, new item. Uh, yeah, she wants course. to insta get the drop. That's I've the got 10,000 10, gold to spend. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, I mean, it, it guarantees one drop of a new item. So uh, it, it's very decisive this late into the game. The only thing she could buy otherwise is uh, basically go towards um, Aghanim Scepter and consume that. But it's not the most impactful. Ags is really, really bad nowadays. She swaps it in. Getting ready for minute 60. DD Rune is here too. They're trying to preserve that for a while. He's gonna take it in the end. Oh, we can see a smoke out here for minute 60. What are you gonna do on the side of Tundra? Yeah, I don't know. This map is very dark. They've got one Observer Ward on that right side near Dire Ancients, but else it's Dire Wards on that left side. And a very, very tight map smoke for Tundra for to play into. Yeah, they're making a play towards the Roche here. He wants to pop that Midas too, but 10 seconds for the uh, minute 60. At the same time, the smoke rotation is happening here. They have to be ready for Radiant. And they scan them up. Beautiful scan. Read like a book. Yeah. Staying sharp here. Can't go towards the Ancients. Let's see what they drop and see if they can catch anything here. It's Radiant. I mean, They're still on the hunt. Uh, yeah, Quest is still around. The tiny noob. Oh, he's been jumped here. Doomed, stunned. They've also got a cat on the Chen in the back. Oh, the but Noob's the big more. ticket kill. 120 seconds with no tiny. Chen looking a little worse for wear as well. As Tundra come back and get a double kill for Thompson. I, I did oh, not realize baby. Rubik still had roar from the previous fight. That primal roar. Buyback's now coming out. But Tiny obviously doesn't have buyback. And they know that. There's a four minute window of him not having it. So 100 seconds, no tiny guarantee. Roche available. They have two rapiers in their team. I'm so happy to get the Aegis. Who even takes the refresher at this point? Is it Kiro, I guess? But he, you know, you're struggling because you want to carry dust against the TA in these fights as well. Someone has to have the detection. Everyone's slotted. <laughs> they got no room for it. Uh, too many things to carry, honestly. Right, so refresher shard on the floor. This still needs to be picked up. Some banners around. Uh, drop in, picking up items left and right. They have gem on Rubik, so the dust in backpack is fine. Rubik is now responsible for the detection game. And tier 5 item time. Yeah, let's see what we have here. Quick update. We have the Arcanist armor for the uh, Sand King, so big AoE aura. Uh, we have a pirate hat on the Chen, not the most amazing, but it does give him a ton of gold over time for his team. 
Tundra. They're on high ground, though. That's a raw placed on the Rubik. Tops and TPs to him. Burrows into Gyro as Ramses makes the move straight in. And nine classes in Fountain. Um, Dooms are going out. <laughs> the Macrophar is down. Ramses has got to kill under Malik. He's brought back on this beast mass, but he's lost Chen. Dead for two minutes. Gyro is about to fall here as Omar gets crushed under the boot of Topson. The racks have fallen. And now we're in what? A, a seven versus three with ages and cheese in the hands of Tundra. They're going straight for tier fours. Yeah, Ramses absolutely. makes a jump onto the TA. He gets sized up in the meantime. Does turn around though. Has dropped the call down trying to protect TA 2000. But this Templar assassin is being surrounded. The Book of Shadows buys a little bit of time. But TA surrounded and killed. Will buy back. But with no teammates to back her up, it looks like it's over now. And the drop of a hat. Tundra come in. I oh, mean, back to a regen. I got fortification. Try and buy a bit of time. But. <laughs> Ramses returns fire. <laughs> Ramses, uh, he did say, say some stuff about the Kali's earlier. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Pure. You've been naughty in the past, Pure. Uh, pure, don't get involved, man. It's been broken. Some good damage from the TA, but not enough to finish him off. Pure, pure steps up. He is losing his first life, but that's Aegis down, and GG is called. Quest knows that it's time to tap out and hand Tundra the victory in game number two. And a draw is the result of the series at the end of this. What a crazy game, too. We have 63 minutes.